Um, and before we award um, what will be $533,000 worth of financial awards um, over, over two years. Uh, I think we have uh, the uh, pleasure of uh, hearing from our keynote speaker, who is uh, Mr. Glenn Jones from the Bermuda Tourism Authority. Um, I've known Glenn for a few years, kind of casually, um, but uh, he is with the Bermuda Tourism Authority, as I think I said, which I consider Bermuda's other international business. Um, in the short time that the BTA was established, um, I think they appear to be getting some good groundwork done and hopefully Bermuda seems to be getting positioned for uh, what is hopefully a sustained recovery on tourism. Um, Glenn is uh, currently the Director of Public and Stakeholder Relations for the Bermuda Tourism Authority, which means you might have a very wide business card with a long title like that. Um, he is an Emmy Award winning broadcast journalist with a decade of broadcasting experience both in Bermuda and overseas. In 2007, he uh, left journalism and took on the role as the uh, press secretary to the Premier of Bermuda, um, going through a successful general election uh, with the Premier of Bermuda and the Progressive Labour Party. Uh, he then re-entered the private sector uh, as a uh, media executive, uh, running Bermuda.com and ultimately assuming the leadership of Media House, which owned uh, Island Press, the Bermuda Sun, and, and Bermuda.com. So, but today, uh, Glenn is responsible for corporate communications for the uh, Bermuda Tourism Authority, uh, which means that he works with the destination marketing organizations for divisions uh, and builds channels of dialogue with all sectors of the local tourism economy and the general public. His background in journalism, digital media, and politics uh, makes him uniquely suited for this role. Uh, so, Glenn is a graduate of the Barclay Institute, and I know he's not the only one here today. Um, <laughs> and uh, from Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. So, uh, welcome, Glenn. Thanks very, thanks very much, Christian. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, to, the, to the members of Parliament who I've uh, had the pleasure of having some lunch with over here, um, and to the Distinguished Education Award recipients, it's really my pleasure to be here with you today. I'm honored that Christian and, and Richard would think I'm the right person to speak to this room of, of bright superstars. The positive vibes in this place are feeling pretty good right now, so I'm, I'm really glad to be here. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the decades of dedication that ABEC has made to the young people in our community, year after year. These education awards are so incredibly important. They showed me an extensive list of people who earned an ABIC award over the years. Um, I think that that same list is in your brochure, and they are truly an impressive cast of characters, some of which I know personally. They are names you would recognize as well because you've probably heard about the fine contributions they've made to our country's success in one way or another. So to the scholarship committee and the people who assist them, to companies that put up the money and the mentors who help follow through, to all of you, thank you. Our community is better off as a result of what you do. And I think we should give them a round of applause. <laughs> all right, so now to these bright shining stars in the room. I must confess that uh, like a procrastinating college student with a term paper due, I had a lot of false starts trying to decide what I was going to talk with you about today. It must have been two months ago now that Christian approached me to see if I was willing to do this, but it was only about two days ago <laughs> that I actually decided on what to talk about. I hope you'll forgive me for that. Part of my problem is that so much has happened in just the past couple of months. Just think about it for a minute. We had that horrible mass shooting at Pulse, the gay nightclub in Orlando. In one week, two seemingly non-aggressive black men, minding their own business, ended up dead after their encounters with white police officers, only to follow that with the death of five law enforcement officers in Dallas and then three more in Baton Rouge. As I near almost 40 years old, I must be getting a little sentimental because I watched those news stories on television through tears. 
My training is in journalism, as Christian mentioned. I was a TV reporter in the United States for a while. On this side of the camera, in today's climate, I find myself in this constant mixture of anger and sadness and confusion. The latest violence made for some tough conversations uh, with my own stepson, who agreed to come with me here today. We've had a few conversations about this stuff. In fact, too many. Some of you will know how that goes. And what about the news stories beyond the United States? There was the terrorist attack in Nice, the airport bombing in Turkey, followed by an attempted coup there not long after that. The Brits decided in a referendum to leave the European Union. <laughs> and our collective heads exploded. <laughs> How do you figure that one out? Then there's our own summer of discontent with a referendum that didn't count. Another young life ended too soon at the hands of a murderer. How many times will our hearts break over that? Then there was a bill in, par in parliament that almost became law in the debate over same-sex marriage. The road to almost was filled with a lot of angst. It was exhausting and exacerbating. All of these things, from Black Lives Matter to Brexit, to the shooting in St. David's, all of it happened since June, since Christian asked me to take part in this speech here today. It's like a year's worth of developments in half a summer. Yeah. So here I am preparing to come and speak with you and thinking about all of those big ticket items. It was a stark reminder that the world is incredibly small. It is tiny. The fact that out here in Bermuda, we can feel impacted by what, by what happened in Baton Rouge or Britain, actually you don't need to be black or Brit to feel connected to those developments. You don't need to be gay to cry for the lives of the people who lost theirs in, at the Pulse nightclub. Oceans aren't enough to separate us, not physically, not emotionally, not anymore. It was this realization that helped me determine a theme for our time here together today. ABIC's goal with these awards is to prepare Bermudians with the educational opportunities they will need to come home and contribute positively to our community, our economy. They want you to be successful. I want you to be successful. Just like the world's problems seem to have no borders, the same is true for our economy here in Bermuda, totally borderless. Sure, we're a small, isolated country out here in the North Atlantic, but the leading driver in our economy is international business. What happens elsewhere affects us to a great extent, and the reverse is also true. Dollars, sterling, yen, all connected. And you know what else knows no borders? Talent. Talent knows no borders. So I am here today to convince you that this room absolutely must be filled with people who are fixated, totally obsessed with becoming world-class talent. Not just some of Bermuda's finest. That's easy. You got that covered. You're here. You need to be the best from anywhere. Best in show. Best in show in a global game with no borders. This is not negotiable. Only your full potential is acceptable. Don't be daunted by this. I'm here to tell you that it's in your DNA. Tell me of another place in the world with a population so small, but yet is home to one of the world's leading financial centers, basically number one in reinsurance. What country produces so few people, yet can have so many natives who are chartered accountants, actuaries, and underwriters? What country this size can produce a Patrick Tannock and a Brian Dupereau or a Gina Smith? in the same space of time, so effortlessly. If you don't know those names, learn them quickly. They are world-class talent, and they are your countrymen and women. I went through the list of ABIC education awardees, again, that are in your brochures. It goes all the way back to 1977, and I found five people on that list who are my colleagues at the BTA this very moment. Jill Dill, Keitha Trott, Kyle James, Jamari Douglas, and Adrian Hassel. Men and women who are part of a group of Bermudians that wake up every day to compete against the world. Let's be clear, the travel business is literally about competing against the world. Us against Barbados, and Cape Cod, and Hawaii, and all the rest. 
And I have to tell you, I'm proud that our country decided to find the best Bermudians to form a destination marketing team to go up against the world and take the ball to the rim. It's working. This group of talented Bermudians, some of which are ABIC <coughs> Education Award winners, are dunking the ball right now. They're killing it. Just wait until the second quarter results come out in a couple of weeks. It'll prove my point. I'm so proud to be part of that team because I think we're world class. Just like Brian Dupereau, Patrick Tannock, just like Johnny Ball and Shane Moore and so many others, some of them in this room. True as well for the group at the Tourism Authority. So this is the legacy that you are stepping into. Pull up your Bermuda socks and let's go. If you're anything like me, when I was beginning my college career, you might worry the burden that comes with being world class is a burden too big to carry. Being best in show is hard. Just pursuing being the best is hard work, let alone achieving it. Long hours, short weekends, a lot of discipline. So here's the thing, all of that is true, it really is. And sometimes it sucks because when you're trying to kill it at your internship late on Friday, your friends are already at happy hour. If success was easy, they'd let anybody achieve it. But here's what will help. Find something you love. Sounds cliche, I know. But it will make your quality of life so much better. When I was a student at, at Berkeley, I wanted to be a television reporter. Badly. I knew that early in my life. And as I learned more about the career field, I put together dozens of reasons that it was a really, really bad idea. <laughs> First, in Bermuda, the ceiling for broadcast journalism is very low. And on the technology side, I mean, it's atrocious. <laughs> Historically, we advance at a pace about 10 years behind everywhere else when it comes to broadcasting. So I started my career in the United States, but the thing about journalism in a big country like that, with many media markets, you must first cut your teeth in small markets that no one's ever heard of. The pay and the quality of life are, are pretty awful. You'd feel sorry for me if I told you the salary attached to my first contract as a local TV news reporter in Springfield, Massachusetts. I would ask Christian to pass a hat, just so to make up the difference. Here's the thing though, what's going to get you out of bed in the morning when it's not the money? What's going to motivate you to be best in show when the show sucks to begin with? How will you be world class unless you self-motivate? It's been my experience that you can only overcome these challenges when you love what you do. When you have a passion and a purpose. That's how you will get things done, especially when the pay and the workload and the lifestyle are not glamorous. I'm proud to say that I stuck with my passion and it took me to some amazing places. I covered the launch of a NASA space shuttle at Cape Canaveral. I spent a week on the road with Florida Governor Jeb Bush covering his re-election campaign. I was at the Democratic National Convention in Boston when Senator Barack Obama became a household name. And then in 2006, I won an Emmy Award. Look, no one was more surprised by that than me. <laughs> I didn't even go to the ceremony. Truth be told, I wasn't trying to win an Emmy. I was really just trying to be the best storyteller I could be because I liked the work so much. I think that's another truism about being world class. Don't chase world class while looking around to figure out how everyone else is performing. Become world class by constantly challenging your own personal best. You become world class by looking in the mirror, not gazing out the window. You need to constantly hone your craft based on your own standards of success. That's the most rewarding way to become best in show. I know this in hindsight because that's how I became an Emmy Award winner while competing against reporters with more experience and certainly more skill than I have. These days, it's patriotism more than anything else that is helping to get me out of bed in the morning. I get to work with a team of people that are literally rescuing our tourism industry from the garbage heap. I know there are some math wizards in the room, so I brought some stats. Contemplate these. In 1980, we had 112 licensed hotel properties in Bermuda. At the end of last year, 43. 62% decrease, my math wits already know that. In 1980, we had 4,600 hotel rooms. At the end of last year, we had 2,400. In the last 35 years, hotel rooms have basically been cut in half, slashed. This is the free fall that we were in. 
tell me how you grow a tourism economy with those infrastructure stats. Now we have new hotels in the pipeline and confidence is returning, so that's all good news. And assuming that everything happens, we'll be back up to 2,700 rooms and we can do a lot with that 13% increase. So what about air arrivals? Well, in 1990, visitor air arrivals were 435,000. Last year, they were about 220,000. Again, slashed in half in the past 25 years. That is a boulder rolling down Langton Hill and somebody has to step in front and stop it. That's what we're trying to do at the BTA. We're brave, we're doing it, because if not us, then who? But to know this, you need to have tuned in because the setbacks get a lot more airtime than the successes. Trust me, I know, I used to be a reporter. Through May 31st of this year, vacation air arrivals are up 9%. More than 80% of that increase is with visitors under 45 years old. That's more young visitors coming to Bermuda without giving up any ground to the older visitors who have always come to see us. I'll confess there's some excitement around this because it's progress and it is also our passion and our purpose. Same is true for all of, our, all of my colleagues. Most of them are not much older than the award recipients tonight, I should put on, point out. I know that if we can just fix tourism as a second pillar to our economy, as Christian mentioned, all of us will be better off. It means people already working in the tourism industry can earn more money. More visitors mean more entrepreneurial opportunities for people who want to sell their arts and crafts, open a restaurant, or hopefully soon offer rental vehicles. It also means more jobs for our community that is crying out for more work opportunities. <laughs> okay, the jury's still out on that one. One of my favorite moments since I've been at the BTA is when the government put out a report on workforce numbers and it showed the number of tourism jobs grew by something like 100 people in 12 months. We literally cheered in the office, like the way someone cheers at a basketball game when there's a sick dunk. At the BTA, we all know that scoring for the country's tourism product is our purpose right now. Scoring for the country is our passion. And to do it, we all have to be world-class, joined with like-minded people who aren't about being second best. When you leave here today with your ABIC Education Award, what will be your purpose, your passion? How will you become world-class? The expectation is that when you accept this award, you carry with you a duty to give back to your community, just like Jonathan Ball and Patrick Tannock and so many others. So the questions once again are these, what will be your purpose? How will you become world class? For all I've shared here today, the one thing I cannot tell you is the answers to your questions. Your parents won't know either, not your professors, not a politician. The answer is going to come from the person you see when you whip out your cell phone and you take a selfie. <laughs> it's been my pleasure to spend some time with you this afternoon. Thank you very much. Yeah, good luck and Godspeed.